So it turns out for some of the smaller complex substituents, you've also got common names you're responsible for, especially for the three and four. Some classes might even stretch to five, but I'm only going to cover the three and four. That's what's typically uh, required for most classes. Uh, and so in this case, it turns out if you've got a three carbon substituent, so let's just draw three carbons out here, it turns out if you want to bond that to anything else, you've got a couple options. You either bond it to one of the ends, or you bond it to the middle carbon, and that leads us to two possible isomers. So if we look here, if I bond it to either end, in this case I'm going to do chlorine as my example, so I'm going to bond a chlorine to one end, so my line angle structure would look like so, and again it didn't really matter which end, uh, that's called n-propyl chloride as a common name, we'd know, you know, properly call it 1-chloropropane by IUPAC rules, but it's called n-propyl chloride, the n standing here for normal. So that's not new, but what is new is if I attach it through that middle carbon highlighted at the green arrow there. And so in this case, with three carbons, attaching it through the middle, this is going to be isopropyl chloride, and the line angle structure would look like so. And again, so with three carbons, we have two options, just a straight chain, which will be called a, a regular propyl group, or sometimes a normal propyl group, so n-propyl for short, or just the only possible isomer of that, the isopropyl group. Now it turns out for four carbons, we've got some options here. So in first one, we've got to consider a couple different sets of options depending on the chain. So if you can have a four carbon straight chain, or we'll find out in a second here, you can have a four carbon branch chain. So let's deal with just the straight chain first. With just the straight chain here, if I want to bond something else to this, I can either bond it to either end, and that's totally equivalent. So, or I can bond it to one of these middle carbons. So, and if we just bond it to the end here, it's just a straight chain substituent. We'd normally just call a butyl group on a part of a bigger chain and stuff like that. Uh, and in this case, they just call it N-butyl chloride, again, short for normal butyl chloride, and the line angle structure looks like so. Now, if I bond it through one of these middle carbons, so one of the terminology you gotta understand is that we rank carbons or label carbons based on how many carbons they're bonded to. And these two middle carbons are directly bonded to two other carbons, which makes them secondary carbons, and that's where this next name is gonna come from. With a straight four carbon chain, bonded through either one of the middle ones, and I'll put a chlorine on either one of these middle, we call this sec-butyl chloride. Again, the line angle structure would look like so. Cool, so for a straight four carbon chain, there's your two possible isomers, n-butyl or sec-butyl. So we'll find out with this uh, four carbon branch structure, there's also two possibilities. Now it turns out all these outside carbons are exactly equivalent. So whether you attach this group through any one of these three, they're all the same thing. But then you've also got this carbon in the middle here. That's also your second uh, unique point of attachment leading to a second possible name. So if we look here then, if we've got our branch chain and we bond the chlorine to any one of the outside carbons, so and again if we look at kind of what this looks like, in line angle formula, this is your isobutyl group. So, and I like to think of my isobutyl group as always kind of being a straight chain that ends in a fish tail here, or like a Y, depending on how you look at it. But that's your isobutyl group. So then your other option here would be attaching it through this middle carbon. And that middle carbon being bonded to three other carbons is considered a tertiary carbon. So signified here with this three degree symbol. So, and that's where we'll attach the chlorine. So, and being attached to a tertiary carbon, that's why they call it tert-butyl. And sometimes we simply draw a cross, kind of looking structure and stuff like that. And sometimes we're a little, you know, trying to represent the fact that it's uh, sp3 hybridized and the bond angles are 109.5 and stuff, but take your pick. Either one of these, this is tert-butyl chloride, sometimes called t-butyl chloride for short. Uh, again, we're just attaching a t-butyl group here. So these are the, the common names you definitely have to know. So, and if your professor is into the five carbon common names, I apologize, but you should know those too, but I'm not going to take the time to cover them. Most classes won't incorporate those. Uh, let's take a look at some examples here. Okay, so here I'm asking you to provide two different names for this molecule, two different IUPAC names. So, and the key is we've got a complex substituent down here. So, and we're going to provide both the systematic as well as the common name for it here in a little bit. Uh, so first thing I want to do is find that longest continuous carbon chain. And from this branch point here, if we go to the right, it's four carbons. If we go left, four carbons. If we'd gone down, it's only three, and that's why it's not part of the parent chain. So when we get to this point, whether I go up or to the right, same diff, and same thing on the other side, whether we go up or down, the left, same diff, and so here's one way of getting that longest carbon chain. The only other possible ways that would be equivalent, again, incorporate these methyls and be totally equivalent, so no difference. So, but those are also substituents, methyl groups in this case. Uh, and so in this case, whether I number it left to right, so we'll find that one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, and nine. Our substituents were on two, five, and eight. Had you gone the other way, I designed this problem to get the exact same numbers. It would be two, five, and eight going the other way. So no difference. In fact, this molecule is perfectly symmetrical, and it doesn't really matter which way you name it. The substituents are the same on both sides. Uh, so when we go to name this thing, we've got these methyl groups, and in this case, we would say two comma eight dash di methyl in the name for them. So, and then we've got this complex substituent, and let's name it systematically first. If we name it systematically, it's going to have its own kind of parent chain of the substituent, and carbon number one is the one attached to the actual parent chain of the compound. And from there, we'll number through to the longest chain we can get, and that's going to be three carbons. And I could have done three carbons off to the right or three carbons down, but that makes this guy also its kind of own methyl group in the substituent here. And so when we go to name this thing, uh, this is going to be some form of, in this case, 2-methyl and then 3-carbon chain propyl group. And we'll put that all in parentheses. And we'll see that that is actually attached to carbon 5 of the main chain. And so incorporating our name will be this 5-2-methyl propyl. Now, if we look at the alphabetical part of this here, so methyl is alphabetized under the letter M here for dimethyl. We don't include the di for normal substituents, but for the complex substituent when named systematically, the first letter you see, in this case, just happens to be M for methyl as well. And so it turns out the first six letters are identical, right? Methyl, methyl. So, but this one continues on with more letters, propyl, and this one stops. So this one actually comes earlier in the alphabet. And so when we go to name this thing, it's going to be 2 comma 8 dimethyl dash 5 dash parentheses 2 methyl propyl and your parentheses and then your longest chain here 9 carbons is nonane cool and there's naming your complex substituent here systematically and again in that case it's got to go in parentheses now you might also recognize this group as an isobutyl group as well so if we name it the other option with a common name, and IUPAC again accepts this, we'd have 5-isobutyl, and this would be alphabetized under the letter I. And so if we go to name it this time, we're using this common name, isobutyl actually comes earlier than methyl in the alphabet, and so we'll switch the ordering of our substituents here. So in this case, we'd start off by saying 5-isobutyl, and then 2,8-dimethyl, that's a comma, So, and then finally, again, the same parent chain, nonane. So both of these names are perfectly acceptable. One thing to keep in mind is when you name a complex substituent, it's got to go in parentheses, but uh, when you name it systematically anyways, but when you're using one of the common names, it definitely does not go in parentheses like we just named isobutyl here. Cool. Hope this is clear and hope this helps.